Hello and welcome to the 11th part in this series of tutorial programming videos on C. So we're going to continue in this video looking at arrays. In this video we're going to look at something that's very simple. We're just going to look at multi-dimensional arrays. So you remember from the previous videos, if I want to define an array variable, it's using the square brackets. And inside here, say, I say inside the square brackets how many of that variable type I want to have in terms of space in the program. And an array is simply seen as a container. So in this case, I've declared a container and container to contain 12 integers. And you remember that arrays are zero indexed. So if I want to set the sixth integer in this container, so the one that I would actually use index number five because it starts at index number naught. So if I wanted to set the sixth integer in this sequence of integers to a value of 10, I would do it like this because the first position starts at, what, at zero and one is for the second position and so on because they're zero indexed. All well and good and should be clear from the previous videos. You can also though define multi-dimensional arrays. So if I take that away and create a variable called multi-array and I'm going to put two sets of square brackets and I'm going to put a four inside the first one and a three inside the second one and then put a code block around it and a semicolon and, oops, and then I'll explain what it is. Okay, so as I said before, just having the four on its own would be declaring a container of four integers. Having the three here simply says that we have got four lots of three integers. So if I wanted to actually declare all of those and put values in them, let's say 10, 20, and 30, and put a comma afterwards, And that's simply all it is. Just having three on its own would be three integers. But this multidimensional array here is saying I've got four lots of three integers. One, two, three, and four. And now if I make things a little bit clearer to see where we are, I'll just put some numbers in front of these so they're different values and save this file. And you simply access the values in the array exactly the same as you would when you were just using one index before. So for example, if I want to access or print the 210, I will say at position and we'll say, and this one will be because it's the, I'm looking at the 210, it's the 0, 1, 2 of the four arrays, so it's the third one, which is index number two, because it's zero indexed. And then in those, it's the first number, which is at index zero. So it'll be position two and zero. So I'll just put a couple of square brackets in here so it's quite clear. And put a D and then multi-array position two and zero and a new line also and print this to the screen so I'll save this and compile and run and now you can see at position two zero it's printing 210 because first of all the first number is for the first declaration here which is where we've got four lots of three numbers and we want out of these four lots at position number two, so the third lot, that's this one here. And from those three numbers, we're saying take the number at position zero, which is the first number, which is 210. So if instead I change this to two, I would now be taking the zero, one, two, so I would be printing then 230. So if I just compile that and run it, and you can see it's now presenting, positioning the 230. And likewise, I can also use this index value to actually set the number to a different value. So this time we'll put 4000 and then I can print the array value again just to show this. So I'll compile, print and now we see at the same position in the array we've now stored the value of 4000 at that position. So everything's identical to normal single dimension arrays except you're saying we've got four lots of three. 
So for a chess program, for example, you could say you have eight lots of eight because there are 64 squares, and you could have each of these representing a row of eight squares, for example. And you can also then, with multidimensional arrays, you can add really as many dimensions as you want onto here. So I could say I've got four lots of three lots of, let's say, two numbers. And I'm not going to draw that out here, but you get the idea. So we would have four lots of three lots of two numbers. So that's really what a multidimensional array is. So it's not very difficult. You index and retrieve the values, the same as for a single array, except you need to supply both of the index positions so we know exactly which number is being referred to in the multidimensional array. OK, it's rather a short video, um, but the next bit I want to cover doesn't have much to do with integer arrays. In the next video, we're going to go back to character arrays and just have a quick look at some gotchas that can occur with printing those to the screen and dealing with them. OK, thanks very much for listening. Comments, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.